everyone, this is Lindsay. I'm the lead program librarian at Multnomah County Library. I'm excited to present this video of how to make sun catchers with artist Addie Boswell. This uses materials you can find around your house. It's great for kids, grades K through five, although some of your littles might need some help with the iron. Um, if you're interested, we're gonna have more of these virtual activities and performances on our website, so check it out there. We hope that you're staying safe and are well. Enjoy the craft. Thanks. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to my studio. I'm Addie Boswell. I'm teaching you art projects you can make from your house, like some of the examples behind me, which were all made by my students over the years. And today our theme is sun catchers. And what that means are um, things, pictures that diffuse light that you can hang in your window. They might brighten your house up and they're perfect for spring when there's lots of sun coming. So the first uh, is the simplest made out of coffee filters. They're really kind of just colorful. They're nice to hang as like garlands across your window if you make a lot of them. The second, and most adults have made this at some time in their childhood, uh, melted crayons. You'll need an iron for this, just a regular iron. And the third project, I call these uh, fake stained glass because they have that same kind of see-through quality, but they're a lot easier to make. So let's get started. For the first project, the coffee filters, all you're gonna need is coffee filters, hopefully you have some around, and water-based markers, which are your Crayola or basic kids markers. So what you're gonna do to start is just flatten a coffee filter out. I got two, they're real thin, and you're just gonna start coloring with your markers. Now you can make a nice picture if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. So really all you wanna do is cover up as much of that coffee filter as you can. So I'm going to, for this first one, I'm gonna use just primary colors. You guys remember what primary colors are, I bet. Three colors. I'm gonna use just those primaries because I wanna see when I spray the water on if, it, if I can find the secondary colors it mixes, so. Got it almost filled up yet. And you can just scribble on this if you want or draw a pattern, kind of whatever you want. You can try different things. I'm gonna scribble some over the, over the middle. Okay, so I have my coffee filter all filled up. Now we are gonna spray water on top of it. So before you do that, you might wanna go outside and put it on the ground. I like to put it on a paper plate if you have one around because that holds it really nice. And now we're gonna spray real gently. This is just water. Give it a couple sprays and I'm gonna give it a minute and see if it starts to kind of mix together. I'll give it a couple more sprays. And now I just wanna give that a little time to cure. So I'm gonna set it down for a little bit. It's looking good already though. Okay, I'm gonna set that down right here and let it dry a little bit and let it move around. Um, and, and you might not have a spray bottle that you wanna uh, dedicate to water, but I know you have something like this in your house, Windex or another cleaner. So I just thought I'd try and experiment to see if that would work the same. Let's try it. This is the Windex. It smells nice. So this is kind of running, so I'm moving it around. This is another one I did just in primary colors. I'm going to spray it one more time and let it rest. Okay, we'll let that rest too. And I want to try one more that's not primary colors where I just use all the colors I have. And maybe I'll try to make kind of a pattern of stripes on this one. Let's see, I got some purple, got some turquoise. So they're kind of hard to draw on because they're um, really thin and they're easy to tear. But you don't have to do a very good job, so. Some yellow, let's see, I want one more bright color. Maybe I'll do some orange around the edge. All right, we'll see when these blend, what colors they make. make. One more, I wish I had some pink. Maybe some purple, a little more purple. Okay, that's what that one looks like. And let's say for this one, say you don't have any spray bottles, um, what you can find, you can just drip water on. So I have my little cup of water here and I could just drip it on with my fingers like that. Or you probably have a little medicine syringe somewhere in your house. Let's see what happens when I drip on the medicine syringe. I'm gonna put it on top of some other ones. Okay, just gonna squirt this out. Ooh, that's already getting pretty. 
All right, let's let that one rest a little bit too. Okay, let's go back and see if our first one has done anything. I'm gonna peel it off the paper plate. Usually you just wait till these are dry, but you can already see, oh, that's making beautiful colors. And it kind of blended in the one. So do, do you see, look close, do you see any purple, green, or orange? I think I definitely see some purple. So you just wait for that to dry and it'll make it really beautiful. The other nice thing if you use a paper plate is it makes your paper plate kind of pretty too. You, and you could cut that out of, um, even cut it into a shape and use that as part of your art too. So we'll let those dry. Uh, so once you're done with them, and let's see, this is the second example. It's, it's not quite blending as much. I think I might want to spray a little more. That was the Windex one. Let's spray a little more Windex and see what happens. It might be that the, the Windex does something weird to the, to the marker, I'm not really sure. We'll give that a couple more minutes. And this is our third example, which we just dripped water on. Ooh, that's pretty too. That's gonna be really pretty. And I put that on top of some more coffee filters. So if you don't mind wasting coffee filters, you could kind of make a stack of them and then you get the ones underneath with your design. Let's see what the third one looks like if it went through. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a system. So imagine if you like strung some string through these and hung them up, they would really brighten up your place. They'd be really good party decorations too. Um, but one more thing, if you don't want to just hang them up, they're, they're mostly just fun to make. But if you want something to do with them afterwards, it's not just hanging them up. The other thing you can do is if you have a pipe cleaner, just tie that around there and you have some really pretty flowers. You could make a bunch of them. You can also make butterfly. I would put that either on a popsicle stick or if you have a clothespin makes a nice body. Uh, or you can think what a, what else you can make out of them. They're, it's up to you. It's an art experiment. All right, I think that's it for the coffee filters. Enjoy mixing. Ready for the next project. This one is a little messy but it involves melted crayons and it's really fun to do. So what you need for this project is an iron, a household iron. Mine's uh, heating up, put it on medium to medium high heat. You need um, a newspaper just to keep your iron clean. Some crayons, broken crayons are great. Peel the paper off them, I did that already. And this is the most important part, you need some sort of plastic to melt the crayons between. So I know everybody probably has wax paper. Wax paper works great. It ends up with um, melted crayons kind of like that. That one looks like a solar system to me. But you can also, if you have any other hard plastic around, you can you can use that too or try it. Um, my students and I discovered that these are CD spacers. So when they used to sell like 100 packs of blank CDs, they would have spacers in between. And my students and I discovered that those make really good sun catchers. You would put two of them together and melt the crayons. And, um, and they're really beautiful, so that works. Um, I have... These were from a yogurt container, like a little yogurt container, and I cut the edge off. I'm gonna see if that will work, if you happen to see some plastic around your house. And the thing that works the best, which you might not have, but is transparency sheets. These are for overhead projectors, um, and they resist, they're made to resist heat, so they work really well. So that's what I use when I'm teaching in libraries. I'm gonna cut this one in half. So we'll try a couple different things of those and see how they work. You basically just gotta use whatever you have around. So we're going to use the projector sheets and I'm going to cut a piece of um, wax paper. You need a top and a bottom to everything you use, so I'll cut that on top. And then I have those two little pieces of yogurt container. I'll try two. So those are our plastic. Now, before we can get the iron started, we got to smash up some crayons. So there are some different ways to do this. When I'm uh, teaching at the library, what I do is buy some cheap um, cheese graters from the dollar store, the ones that you, you know, grate the cheese like that, and you can actually just grate the crayons up, and it makes really nice shavings. Uh, you probably don't want to uh, sacrifice your household cheese grater, though. So the other thing you can do is if you happen to have a pencil sharpener with the, the bigger crayon piece, you just keep sharpening and you'll get lots of shavings, but probably the easiest and maybe the most fun is just smashing those babies up. So I'm gonna put some in a Ziploc. Make sure you got a Ziploc of some sort. Get my mallet out. A hammer works too. Um, and I already smashed up some, but I'm gonna pick some more. So pick your colors you wanna do for the first round. Ooh, I get a lime green there. Okay, and you put those in the Ziploc. 
And then uh, my Ziploc's already got some holes. And then you start smashing. You ready for some noise? Wah! My Ziploc wasn't shut. So you want these pretty small. It looks like I had a crayon in there that was, I don't know what that is. Maybe it wasn't quite a, wasn't quite a crayon. Uh, you want these pretty small, so if you have big chunks, keep, keep smashing. Okay, let's see how that goes. So now I have all these like little shavings, and this is messy because the crayons get out sometimes, but. Okay, so I'm gonna pour some of these shavings on one of the, the sheets. It's pretty much impossible to make any sort of picture, so you just sprinkle them on kind of in the middle. I'm gonna put some on the wax paper, and you want more than you think because you, because when they melt, they really spread out. So you can put quite a few on there. And some on my little yogurt container. All right, we got them spread out. Now this is the important part. Don't forget your lid, because you gotta put the lids on so that you don't just iron them right onto the newspaper. So I put the lid on my, on that one. Lid on this one. And where did my little round lid go? There it is. You sometimes lose these, so put my lid on that one. Now I'm gonna put these in between the newspaper. I'm gonna open the newspaper and put them in the middle because if the, the crayons go over the edge, I don't wanna ruin my iron or my mom might get mad at me. Okay. Okay, so I've got all three of them there. I'm gonna close the newspaper up. Now I remember where they are. I can feel them with my hands kind of and I'm gonna start ironing. So the thing that's important to remember with an iron is that you should always keep it moving real slowly uh, because if you leave it too long in one spot, it'll burn, it can start to burn a hole in whatever you've got. So let's count to 20 to start. I can feel kind of big chunks in those crayons, so I know we got a lot to melt. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Can you hear my, you can see my iron steaming. Let's check it out. We might have to do more. Ooh, I don't know if you can see they're starting to melt, but not a lot. So we want to, we want to do a little more. See, they're kind of falling out of my yogurt container. Okay. Do, do, do. I'll just do some more. And if it's really not melting after 20 seconds, if nothing started, you probably want to turn your iron up. I might turn mine up. Mine's almost up to max now, which might be a little too hot. Let's see. So you just keep doing this and keep checking until you get your crayons as spread out as, as you like. And it's kind of your choice. The more you do it, the more you'll spread out. You'll know if you do too much because all the colors will melt together and you'll get brown. You guessed it. Okay, I see that steaming again. Ooh, it's getting interesting. So this is what it looks like so far. I think I might want to spread that out some more because I want the light to be able to shine through. And it looks like, and this one's looking good, it looks like my yogurt container is not really working so far. We'll keep trying. Do a few more seconds. So I can kind of feel with my iron, I can kind of feel the chunks um, underneath. They kind of make little bumps, so I'm just trying to spread those out a little bit. I might have actually got too many crayons on these. We'll see. It's better if you can do really small shavings. Um, so maybe I should have just smashed them up some more. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. I'm gonna do a little more. I know my yogurt container is like right here. Okay, should we look again? Do you think it's time? Let's look. Open up your paper. Ooh. So there's the wax paper one. That is gorgeous. I think I'll stop there because I'm afraid it might start to melt together. It's funny, it looks different on the different sides too. Here is the um, transparency sheets. Ah, oh, that is beautiful. And my yogurt containers didn't seem like they worked too much. They kind of spread out, but they didn't really stick together and they started to warp. So maybe those are a no-go. It worked okay. So it's an experiment. So these are just beautiful. What you'll probably wanna do after you do a couple is just keep making more. 
But if you're wondering, oh man, I love this one. If you're wondering what to do with them, like as far as making a picture, one thing you can do is get some black paper or colored paper and cut something out of out of the middle or out of the sides and then glue your your uh, crayon melting in between. This one, I think I, um, I just cut the paper in half and cut out pieces in different shapes and then put the, the plastic inside. And those are fun to hang in the window. Um, oh, they're so beautiful. So you can do what you want with them. You can just keep them around too. There's one I made before too. So pretty. Um, and they're good to hang in the window because the sun kind of filters through. One thing, one warning though, is you don't want to hang them anywhere there's really direct sunlight. Like if you've ever had crayons melt in your car, you know what I'm talking about. If you hang them in a window that gets tons and tons of heat, the crayons will actually like melt out of here and start dripping off and down into your carpet, which is bad. So don't do that. But I think that's it for the crayon meltings. Have fun. Ready for our final project of sun catchers. I call this um, fake stained glass because it has that kind of beautiful glistening effect if you hang it in light, uh, but it's a whole lot easier and it's fun to make too. So you do need some specialized materials for this project though. The first is some form of plastic. If you just did the sun catchers, um, whatever you used for that would probably work, like the transparency sheets. Um, wax paper would probably work too, I haven't tried it. My favorite thing to use though is, um, these are called, I think, sheet protectors. You might have some in a, in a recipe book or a binder or a photo album. And what you can do is just cut off this little seam and then you have, um, you have like a two part picture. And that's what we're gonna use that works really well. But if you don't have that, you probably have cling wrap. And I've never experimented with cling wrap before, but I'm going to today because it should work just the same. The problem is cling wrap is really flimsy. So I've taken a piece out and taped it down to my surface here um, so that I can draw on it. So you got your plastic. You also need dish soap. I have this really gigantic uh, container of dish soap. You need water and you need some form of paint. Um, acrylic paint works, tempera paint works. If you have any of these little leftover containers, I think this was in a paint by number or something that my daughter had. And it's almost out, but it'll be perfect just to use up the rest. Uh, I think you can also use food coloring, um, but you just have to be a little, a little more careful because it stains surfaces. And the other thing you'll need is a permanent marker. A Sharpie or an oil pastel also works. The water-based markers don't work on plastic. Okay. So once you got all that stuff, here's what you do. You got to draw your picture first. So when you're drawing your picture, this is one that one of my students made. It was um, a vase uh, or just, I don't know, just a pretty pattern. I liked it and she left it with me. Um, but think of when you're drawing your, your pattern, think of like a coloring book where you have lots of these big sections to color in with different colors. Uh, and you don't want to draw anything too small because it'll be hard to paint inside it anyway. Um, and actually, since these are plastic, you can actually trace right on top of a coloring book. So you could open up a coloring book, put your plastic on it, and trace right on top of it. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, so I drew that picture already. I'm going to, on my um, cling wrap, I started a rainbow. I'm just going to add some more things. So this is a little hard to draw on because it wrinkles, but it's the, the Sharpie is working pretty well, actually. So I think this will work. Let's see what else should we put? We got some stars and a rainbow. Put a bird over here. You can do whatever kind of picture you want. It's more like a bat. Anyway. Okay, so there we got our picture. So now is the fun part, which is the experiment part, where you're going to mix up your paint. So the reason we're using dish soap and water, uh, regular paint is, this kind of paint anyway, is kind of opaque, which means you can't really, light doesn't shine through it. And we want the light to shine through this. So we're gonna add dish soap and water to this paint. And that makes it just a little more slippery and shiny. And that'll be good for our stained glass. So um, there's no real recipe for this. You just gotta try it out. But because these are such little containers, I put some water in my little medicine dropper. I'm just gonna put a little squirt in each of these. And I'll try that out. And then if I need more, I can always add more. A little squirt in these. I'm using a medicine dropper because I'm afraid of getting water all over. And then since these are so little, let's see if I can put just one little drop, whoa, of this giant box. It's coming off pretty fast, so just a little in each. All right, let's see how that goes. So I'm gonna mix one of these up, just mix the red up. And you can't really tell by looking at it how it'll work. You just basically gotta paint it on. 
Ooh, so it's really light. So this will look kind of, um, oh yeah, I'll show you on this one. It'll look kind of like it's not covering all the way. You see that? But that's kind of what you want for the for the light to shine through. So that'll be pretty good. Let me color some more of these. Yeah, it'll be kind of light. I think you can kind of see that. So I'm just mixing up each color. If you start with just two or three, it's a little faster. And it won't look real dark because of the soap and the water that you've added to it. Cool. I'm going to paint some more of this one. Now, the reason I like that this opens and closes, you'll see this in a minute. Nice thing about this paint is you can just wipe it off if you mess up. But um, but I'm gonna paint on the inside of the fold so I can fold the top shut. And the reason this works good is that um, these take a little while to dry on the plastic. So you'd have to just kind of leave it right where it was for a while. But if you have this lid, you can just close it up right away and see what it looks like. So let me see, I'm gonna do lots of colors on this one before I fold it up and mix up my blue and my purple. And if it's not spreading well enough for you, um, you can always add more soap and water. Um, this blue is really pretty, it's like a turquoise. This is great too, because I'm gonna use up the rest of these little tins and then I can get rid of them. Here's a little purple. Do the outside, of course. The other thing I like about the, the dish soap, when you um, put the lid on with this one, it kind of makes these these cool little bubbles. Ooh, I can see it's getting kind of soapy. Some of this has a little too much. I think the pink has too much dish, dish soap. And if you get too much dish soap, it just won't show much of the color. It's not a big deal, but. Okay, a little more on this one and then we'll close it up and see what it looks like. So I have tried, if you have especially tempera paint or water-based paint that's washable, you can also paint this stuff directly on your windows if you don't mind um, getting them a little messy because the soap makes them really easy to, to wash off. So if you feel like letting your kids paint the windows, maybe the outside of the windows so that you can just kind of spray it off when you're done. Um, okay, I think we've about got enough color on here. Let me do one more in the background. And then I'm gonna close this fold and we'll see what it looks like. I'm doing kind of a messy job because I want want you to see the end. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We're going to close it up. So put this lid on and then I don't have to, it's hard to close it just right, but then I don't have to worry about this dripping out. And then I have that. So you can tell with this one, I think it's the kind of paint I use. With this one, I used acrylic paint and it was a little darker. So that makes a little darker um, colors and a little darker um, Sharpie. But that one would be pretty hanging in the window. It would be kind of springy colors. So you can experiment with different paint and different levels of, um, of soap and water. Let's see how this, this cling wrap one turned out. So yeah, that worked pretty good. You can imagine if you hung that up on your window, you would have to find a way to kind of stretch it out. Um, but I think the light would shine through it nice. And maybe, I don't know if you could even just stick it up to the window. So if you don't have any other plastic, cling wrap is great. Just spread it out a little bit. Okay, happy painting your stained glass. Have fun.